Hello, welcome back to Chemistry, It Is All That Matters. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the nature of light. And so he said, let there be light. And it was light. And it was good. So let's talk a little bit about the nature of light. And so what is light? Well, by the 17th century, we have figured out that light had been observed to do the following. It could travel in straight lines, it could be reflected, it could be refracted, and we knew that light also carried energy from one point to another. And there came about two basic theories uh, which explain this phenomena. But let's make sure we understand some of those definitions first. Reflection is the act of the light being reflected back or changed from one direction to another and that reflection allows light to be seen. That's why we can see in a mirror. That's why uh, you can uh, angle light from one direction to another using a mirror and so on. Now, refraction is the ability to bend light, to change its direction. Have you ever tried to skim something out of the bottom of a pool and when you put the pole of the skimmer in it seems that the pole bends at the surface of the water or maybe you reach into the water and where you reach isn't exactly where you touch to find whatever you're trying to grasp, grasp off the bottom of the pool or the tub and that's because the light is changing because of the density of the two media the air and the water it makes the light travel at different speeds different velocities and therefore we see uh, slightly at a different time and that seems to make the light bend or refract so the original theory or the original two ways to explain this phenomenon of light was the first one was the wave theory and it was advocated by Christian Eugens and Robert Hooke and both of them were acting upon the idea that light traveled in waves similar to radio waves, sound waves, uh, any type of waves, water waves so that there would be a defined pattern to the motion of the light and that light traveled in these very distinct waves. Now the second theory was called the particle theory and this was advocated by Isaac Newton and later Pierre Laplace and they said that light was made up of a stream of tiny particles called corpuscles and that these tiny par particles actually traveled in very distinct straight patterns. So the more popular theory originally was the particle theory because Sir Isaac Newton had such a strong reputation for understanding the science and math. Now Newton's particle theory was easily explained when you were dealing only with straight line motion. And straight line motion included reflection and the transmission of energy. But it had a great deal of difficulty in explaining the idea of refraction that the light would change or seem to change uh, direction based on media. With Newton's explanation it had to be accepted that light could travel faster in water than in air. Now Eugen's wave theory could easily explain energy transmission and refraction but had difficulty explaining the straight line travel of light. And with this it would basically be required that light traveled slower in water than in air. So the debate amongst the two sides continued until the mid-1800s and in the mid-1800s the idea of interference of light and diffraction of light came into play and actually diffraction was seen much earlier in this but wasn't explained until this time and neither phenomena could be explained satisfactorily by the particle theory. So this was basically the final blow to the, the particle theory that when in 1850 Jean Foucault discovered that light traveled faster in water than in air. 
Now this idea of diffraction is the idea that although light travels in a straight line, as it passes through things like diffraction gratings, think of that like a picket fence, that the light is actually diffused or spread out and changes direction and spreads out. So this is why a movie theater projector starts out with a straight beam of light and as it goes through the lens it is diffused, diffracted, and then it becomes bigger or on the big screen. Now we have basic nature of light. Light can be reflected, light can be refracted, bent, it can be absorbed and radiated, this talks about the energy, and it can be diffracted. So how are we going to work with all of these again based on those two phenomena? So along comes James Maxwell and he continued the ideas of Michael Faraday and Michael Faraday basically said that the waves actually didn't work as either particles or waves but were electromagnetic in their movement or E and M and that they were periodic disturbances that involved both magnetic and electric forces. And this was finally confirmed in 1865 by a man named Heinrich Hertz. And that is where we get the idea of Hertz being the frequency, how often a wave moves. Um, and we come to understand that light can act as a wave. So we now look at light as part of the electromagnetic spectrum which includes radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet light, x-rays, uh, different types of x-rays, soft and hard x-rays, and gamma rays. Now what we're most concerned with is this region here in the middle, infrared, visible light, what we can see with our eyes, and ultraviolet light. So that is where we're going to basically continue our discussion of light. So at the end of the century, um, the two physicists had come to the idea that the wave theory of light comes from the idea that we're still very uncertain about what light is. That view was to change around 1900 when we gained the understanding of the photoelectric effect, which is that the emission of electrons by a substance when illuminated by electromagnetic radiation could take place. Now careful study of the photoelectric effect was formed by many scientists but it wasn't until our friend Albert Einstein and Max Planck put this all together in what we now look at as quantum theory. And the quantum theory is basically the transfer of energy between light radiation and matter occurs in very discrete units called quanta and remember in a previous video we talked about a quantum is the amount of energy it takes to move an electron up or down an energy level in the atom and that the magnitude of that quanta is dependent upon the frequency of the radiation so if there's a frequency there has to be a wave now this is all too much and it all seems too confusing, but you know what? Neither the wave theory nor the particle theory can completely explain the nature of light. So today, our modern view is that light has a dual character. Light is radiant energy transported on photons, which are packets of light, and packets of light have excited electrons that are guided along a path, and that path works in a wave field. So basically, light can be both a wave and a particle. It's a particle as a photon, but it moves in a wave. So technically, both theories are correct, and this is why light has a dual characteristic. It is both a wave and a particle. It is a wave when it acts as a wave, it is a particle when it acts as a particle, but altogether it travels in a straight line, it can be reflected, it can be refracted, it can be diffracted, and light carries energy. So this is a great introduction to light, but what we're more concerned about is talking about that electromagnetic spectrum 
especially in regards to the points made for the visible light spectrum, which we're going to talk about in the next video when we talk about how elements give off particular colors. And it is in giving off those colors that we see the energy produced by light.